Which one should we do? Three or four? Four. In number four, where is the vertex? Located at what point? Negative four, right? Negative four and positive, positive one. If I know this is my vertex, I'm writing it in vertex form for both these forms of the equation. That means I want y equal, my parabola goes up, so I know that this is a positive in front here. It is going to be x, and in order to get negative 4, I do the opposite of negative 4, which is a plus 4, and then I put minus or plus 1 back here. This tells me the vertex, it tells me it goes up, it tells me where the vertex is located. That's all I have to do when it asks me for that form. Um, if I am taking a look at number 10 or 14, it doesn't matter, same type. On the quiz today, I need you to show me completing the square when you do this, when you get it in vertex form, because we're not taking a homework quiz on completing the square. So, 10 or 14, whoever put those up there. 14, I think it's 16. 16 is standard form, we'll look at that one definitely. So, 14. First thing we have to do is get the x squared and the 12x by itself. So we're gonna rewrite this as y plus 468 is equal to x plus 12x, x squared plus 12x. And I am trying to figure out, oh, what do I have to add for like both sides of my equation? This is the completing the square part of the quiz that I need to see. So when you do this today, we are looking at our b divided by 2 squared. So I should have what, Samantha, b divided by 2? Um, 12 divided by 2. Which gives us 6 squared, right? Which means I have to add not 12, but 36, right? So first thing we have to figure out when you do this on your homework today, or on the homework quiz, you're going to add 36 on both sides, right? I am adding 36 to 468. So I have y plus, as I add those two together, someone take out the calculator or add those for me, is equal to, on this side, this is where I can write the completing the square. And I can write x plus 6 squared. What'd you get? To finish this problem, y equals x plus 6 squared minus 504. So if I was asking you on the homework quiz, which I do, I say at this point you've rewritten it using completing the square in vertex form, and then I say what's the vertex? You would then tell me negative 6, negative 504. Would this be a problem that goes up or down? Going back to my original, should be up. If I was asking you for the domain, the domain should be all real. If I asked you for the range, the range should be all real numbers where what? Greater or equal to that, negative 5 over 4. I don't ask you that, but if you have to know that. That's why vertex form is so nice. I agree that number um, 16. Some people are struggling with remembering this. And when you remember this, this is really that A plus B, going back to our, quad, um, our units with polynomials, A plus B squared. And remembering that that means A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Or X plus 2 squared means X plus 2 times X plus 2. And then back here you have the plus 6. It does not mean this is x squared plus 4. So the key thing is, is that people forget that there's this middle term, right? So x times x gives us x squared. Then you have 2x and another 2x, or 2ab, which is 4x. And then 2 times 2, which is 4, and plus 6. And this is almost in standard form. It's just that you have to add these like terms, okay? 19, vertex form. We just did a vertex form. And 20 is factor form. Factor form after today in a question like this, you probably would use the quadratic formula. Um, vertex form I'm not going to do because we just did that one. That's where you move the 35. You would have moved y plus 35. And you're trying to figure out what you're going to add to both sides equals x squared minus 2x, add the same thing here, 
way and, and you work with your factors. This one, if you don't know your factors and we have a lead coefficient of two and a negative seven, remember that AC method said take two times negative seven and we get negative 14. So Y equals, if I'm factoring, 2X squared, what multiplies to negative 14 and adds to 13? 14X and a negative 1X, right? And now I'm going to factor my greatest common factor. And after today, most of you, if you were solving this, probably wouldn't use this method where you factor your greatest common factor out, Y equals 2X, X plus 7 factoring out a negative 1, x plus 7. At this point, Tanya, how could I write my factors down? And if, Abby, I was looking at this and I said, okay, you look at this in factored form, what is my solution? x would be equal to? What does that mean when I want the solution and I have it in factored form? I'm replacing y with what? I want to solve it. Oh, zero. With zero. So if I wanted to think of zero equals 2x minus 1, right? And then I put zero equals to x plus 7. So that first answer, Abby, would be a positive. Right, 2x minus 1 equals. add one to both sides, and that two is one, because it's a two in front of it. Is that a two? Right? You'd add one, right? You remember this. This is going way back. You'd add one to both sides over here to the zero, and you get one equals two x. That's not solved, right? So in order to get what x equals, you'd have one half, and Joey, the other equation would be solving greatest. So the reason we put those forms is because you're going to be asked what are solutions, right? So that's why factored form is really nice versus standard form versus vertex form for finding our vertex. So up to this point, we have graphed. We have completed the square. We've done square roots. We have done um, factoring for solving quadratics. This is our fifth method called the quadratic formula. You will need to memorize this formula. And when you do so, you always need to identify the A, B, and C values in your original equation. When we talk about this original equation, this is what we are talking about. The AX squared plus BX equals zero. So if your quadratic is not equal to zero, you need to put it equal to zero. Meaning if the C or the X term are on the other side, you want to do that first. The other hint is, if possible, keep your A value positive if it's on the opposite side of the equation, but you don't have to, okay? Um, also today I'll get you your final review packets. I have those, so just don't let me forget to hand them out to you because I have people asking about them. Here is why it works, okay? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but it really goes back to completing the square in that this general form of our equation, if when you were completing the square, remember, we had to get that lead coefficient to be 1, so we we're going to divide everything by A. Once we've done that, what did we do to complete the square? We took whatever term was here, and we divided it by 2 and squared it. And that's what we added on always, right? So on ours, that was the, um, when we were completing the square in our homework, that's what we added to both sides as we were completing that. Um, in this case, they kind of show it all the variables. Someone said, why do we need all these variable parts as we are looking at this? Um, as you get into both Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, the proofs of solving it, it's just kind of knowing the steps. And so it's so ugly with all these variables in it. Why do I have to do that? Um, on the ACT test, this is something that they look at you kind of being able to understand how this came about. Okay. So we get down to this point, and this would have been when we were completing the square where we had something like x plus 3 squared, right, was equal to 20. And what did you do then? You took this x plus 3, and you took the square root of it, and it equaled the plus and minus square root of this side. Well, this number is 20. This is just this ugly combination of numbers, right, that would come out to be equal to something. And then what did we do? Whatever we had, x plus 3, 
equal the positive and negative square root of 20. So that's kind of like this step right here. What did we do next? We subtracted the 3. So this would have been our 3 value. And when you subtract it from both sides, you get this negative b. And usually what we do is we write it this way. So we're going to do some singing today to memorize that formula, but we'll do that in just a little bit. So first thing we look at this equation, top of the next page, and it is not in standard form. It is not equal to 0. So we need this equal to 0. So how do you move that 2x? You subtract 2x. And then you want to write it in standard form. You don't want to put the 2x in the back behind the negative 8. So we write it as x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Our a in this case is 1. b is negative 2. And c is negative 8. So we want to identify our a, b, and c. Standard form means always equal to 0. Okay? It's that whole quadratic. So here is our formula, goes to Pacos and Iso. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Some people like to say divided by. We're going to go with all over. You get to sing it again soon. When you do this, the first few times, I definitely want you to put this negative, right? So some people will go, oh, but don't we already know that opposite of negative 2 is going to be positive 2? The next time you write it, by all means, put that positive 2. But the first time you write it, keep the actual formula, because some of you will make some really silly mistakes if you do that. Here's another place where students often make mistakes. They will tell me this is equal to negative 4 because they want to put negative 2 in their calculator without the parentheses, even though there's a parentheses here. And when you square any negative, it is always positive. So when I square negative 2, this really is 4. And then it's minus 4 times 1 times negative 8, which would be a negative 32, right? So 4 minus negative 32 actually adds together and gives us this 36, right? 36 is nice. The square root of 36 is 6. So one answer is 2 plus 6. And you want to add those first and then divide by 2 equals 4. And then 2 minus 6, which gives us negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. If you don't have a calculator, you need one for when we go to do this next problem. But I want you to think about this original equation, which was x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now, on the test, there will be some of you that will do every question with the quadratic formula, and it's kind of a waste of your time. Because you only have so much time on the test to get the questions done. And if I was looking at this one, this is much easier to factor, isn't it, than use the quadratic. Now, the reason they use the quadratic is they want you to see it with simple numbers so that it works out. But this one would be x minus, if we are looking at that, 4, and x plus 2, right? And if I would have solved that, wouldn't I get x equals 4 and negative 2, the same answers that we got here? So you can see factoring will also work, and especially if they're nice numbers, you want to do it. Today's homework, I want you to practice the quadratic every single time. Even if you could factor or do it a different way, I want you to do it this way so that you could see, um, especially when we get to some of the uglier numbers, how to do that. So quadratic formula. We first have to have it equal to zero. So standard form first. So please rewrite it in standard form in descending order. x squared minus 4x minus 21 equals zero. This probably could be solved by factoring. You guys get your chance now to sing with me. You're going to look at this quadratic to the equation up here, the x equals. We'll sing it once together kind of quietly. Some of you know Mr. Gravlin and have him either in track or know he's over here, but he's really loud, and usually we can hear him. So today, your goal the first time through is not that he can hear you. Well, he can maybe hear you, but the second or third time we do this, he should be able to hear if my door is open. Okay? So let's do the formula. Are you ready? X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, I heard someone had tough vocal cords, but if I can't hear them, 
um, we're going to have to do it even more times. So, are we ready, Mr. Okay. Manley? Are you ready to sing loudly? All right, yeah. here we go. All right, everyone, loudly. Mr. Graflin should be able to hear us. I told him that you'd be able to sing it loud. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. X is equal to negative B. Mr. Thompson? Ah. Could yeah. Apple have seven yeah. student services when the bell rings, please? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> right in the middle of the song. All right, here we go again. X, X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B. Is this something? Yeah. I have to say, I was not leaving at 1 o'clock, so if you could stop at student services with the bell ring. All right. Thank you. Yep. So you get here oh. for the quiz. All right. So let's start over again. All right. Here we go. X, X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root. A B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, some of you very good, some of you a little would be on that. So we're going to write that formula down. X equals, we'll say it one more time. You don't have to sing it as loud, but we're going to start with that. So write it as you're singing it, right? X is equal to negative B plus or minus. Man, you got to write with us. All right, you're ahead of me. All over to A. So we plug it in. And now we are plugging in. And if it helps you to identify behind, A is 1, B is negative 4, C is negative 21. So we are going to start with negative. And yes, it is the opposite, or the minus the negative 4. We're going to put our plus minus. We always have those two solutions. We are going to take negative 4 squared minus 4 times our A times our C, negative 21. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the discriminant, which is the part all underneath the square root. That has a special name called the discriminant because it discriminates what our solution is. If we have 1, 0, or 1. So if I am looking at that, I actually have 4 plus or minus. Four, negative 4 squared is 16. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 21 gives us 84 divided by 2. So this is kind of nice. I have two solutions. 84 plus 16, Ryan, gives us 100. So I have 4 plus or minus the square root of 100. And this is one that you probably could have factored, right? So one answer is 4 plus 10 divided by 2. The other answer is going to be 4 minus 10 divided by 2. Now most of you don't need your calculator to do this. But if you were using your calculator and you wanted to put this in, if you put 4 plus 10 divided by 2, do you think you get the right answer? If you just put it in like this in your calculator, 4 plus 10 and then you hit divide by 2, you get the right answer. No, because it takes 10 divided by 2 and then it adds 4, right? And so when you get to these complicated ones on your calculator and people can't figure out why they're not getting the same answer as the back of the book or when you look at the worksheet, and the main part of what their mistake is, is that you either have to put your equal sign and put 4 plus 10 on your calculator and say, oh, that's 14, and 14 divided by 2 gives me 7, and 4 minus 10 is negative 6, and negative 6 divided by 2 gives me negative 3, and that my two solutions to the problem are x equals 7 and negative 3, and not 5 plus 4, which is 9, right? That's what this answer would have been. If I did this, this is 4 plus 5. Our calculator does order of operations every time unless you tell it. So if you want it to give you 7, you have to put that parenthesis in, right, for 4 plus 10. That is really important when we do the next one. Because if you remember at the beginning of this whole unit, we looked at, like, the baseball being hit, and we looked at what was the highest point and how long did it take it to get there. That was our vertex, right? So we hit the ball, right, you think of that, you hit the ball, the baseball hits the bat. Before we were looking at what was this highest point, that was our vertex. 
we are now looking at this point, right? And before we estimated it, we said, okay, once you find the vertex, it's going to be a little over half, this was halfway, so we can double that. We're not doing that anymore, especially with something this ugly, right? So our question is, where x is the horizontal distance, that the ball travels in y height in feet of the ball, how far from the batter will it land? So we want to know the distance. We want to know the root or the zero. So we are going to look at that equation, and in that equation, our a value would be negative point, negative 0 0.005. Our b value is 0.7, and our c value is 3.5. We're going to start with writing our formula, so I can kind of sing again as we write it. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Next time, Joey, much longer. I don't even think we're singing one yet. Yeah, maybe sing it by himself. Yeah, next time, maybe stand up and sing by himself. Let's see. All right, so let's put in our values. And you are definitely using your calculator, right? These are ugly. So we have negative 0 0.7 plus or minus. We're going to have that 0.7 squared minus 4 times negative 0.005. Can switch my calculator. Oh, you know what it's going to be? What are we going to have in our denominator when we take 2 times that? That comes out to equal a negative point. Zero one. All right, if we multiply those two, if that makes sense. Negative point zero one. Next. Who do you want to put in your calculator? This whole thing. 0.7 squared minus 4 negative 0.005 times 3.5. So if I was writing this, I might say negative 0 0.7 plus or minus the square root of, did anyone get that inside there? The point, 0 0.5 something. Once you got it, check it. 0 0.5. So 0 0.7 squared. These two negatives, right, make it a positive here. So that's going to be like a plus. 4 times 0 0.05 times 3.5. 0 0.56. Thank you. If you did not get that, you want to check. This is where putting it in your calculator is going to be really important, right? Because our two solutions are x equals negative 0 0.7. And if I was putting this in my calculator, I'm putting this big parenthesis first in my calculator that's putting this. And I'm putting plus the square root of 0 0.56. Then I put my back parenthesis, and then I put on my calculator divided by negative 0 0.01. That's one of my solutions. And I'm thinking you should get a negative 4 or something. Put it in your calculator and try it. The other solution that you're putting in your calculator. Minus that square root. Yes, I do want you to have a calculator. And again, you cannot put this in a parenthesis. You can put this whole numerator in and hit equal on your calculator first, and then put divided by 0 0.01. Tanya, what'd you get for the first one? Negative 4.8. And it asks us to round to the nearest tenth, so we're going to go negative 4.8. Is it possible that you hit the baseball and it went negative, like back four feet, 4.8 feet? Not a possible answer for this one, right? So when we put this one in, it did sail out there quite a bit. How much? 100 and. Can we get it? Yeah, put that in your calculator. And if you are not getting these to work out in your calculator, make sure you check with me. Joey, what you got? 
try again. Negative 0.7, we put it in a parenthesis to start with. So put this, put parenthesis negative 0.7 minus 0.5 cents, which is the square root of that, then back parenthesis. Then you're going to do your division by negative 0.01. Hundred and forty-four point eight feet. Did you get it yet? Okay, we want to make sure you're getting it on that calculator. So how do you put it in? So it's not point zero seven. It's point seven. Zero point seven. That might be. All right. So they hit a home run. Baseball players. I don't know. I don't know how far the fence is. I just think it's a good All right. Top the next page. I want to make sure you get that. I just do this and I do this. Okay. So these are the five methods that you have. When we take the test next week, you definitely don't want to use a quadratic formula for every single one. Okay. It's nice to use it if you get stuck, but if you have a graphing calculator, that's kind of nice because it tends you the roots, gives you the, um, the vertex pretty easy. We're going to do a unit coming up with, um, or a lesson coming up where we do everything on the, on the graphing calculator so you can see how nice it is. We didn't want to do it up to this point because you want to use that instead of doing all these other methods that you need to know. So square roots, when you have no x terms, right? When you have something like x squared or you have something like 4x squared equals 25, you just want to get the square roots. You want to put x squared equals 25 divided by 4, and x equals that positive and negative 5 over 2, right? So when you have just x squared and you have no x term, you don't want to take the time and use the quadratic formula. You also don't want to try and factor this. You could. But factoring is when you have an equation that easily breaks down into those two factors equals 0, okay? Completing the square. Don't do it if your lead coefficient isn't 1. And a lot of times people will now choose not to do completing the square because quadratic formula is just plug it all in and solve it, right? But these other two methods, the square root and factoring, sometimes they just present themselves so that they just make sense for you to do those. So the song, um, the remembering the quadratic, you guys are saying it, they sing it. It's like these little kids singing it. So um, we can't even try to sing with it because they're really high pitched. So we're not going to play that. Um, we played it in the last class, and it was like, I we go to I was like, ah, so we don't need that. You guys sang it well enough anyway. Um, so if you are looking at this, which method do we want to use? So in this first one, they say, okay, I'm looking at the problem. I would definitely want to choose square roots. And then they ask you to explain why. There's no x term. So same thing down here. We're going to look at these equations down here. If I look at this one, this is pretty easy to factor, right? To multiply to get 30, 6 and 5, has to add to a negative 1. Oh, x minus 6, x plus 5, right? Pretty easy to factor if I'm on the test. I don't want to take a lot of time and plug this into the quadratic formula. This one, I have a lead coefficient of 6. And I don't want to do that factoring because, like, 6 times negative 17, that's ugly. I probably choose quadratic formula. Why? Well, first off, I'm not even sure it could be factored, but it might take a lot of work. This equation could possibly use completing the square, but it'd be even easier to use quadratic. Why use quadratic? Because you got nice numbers, negative 5, 3, 1. Um, it can't be factored easily. Again, this one, probably quadratic. So the first thing I want you to do is looking at the three equations down below. First, second, or third one do you think you definitely want to use quadratic? Which one did you definitely, definitely want to use the quadratic formula with this for? First, second, or third one? Otto, what do you think? Third one for sure. Why? Because uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. Coefficients are easier to factor. Coefficient, quadratic formula, the coefficient, not one. So our A is equal to 5, not 1. I'd be a good reason, right? Look at the other two and think how you would do them. Looking, would you do factoring? Would you do square roots as you are looking at those? 
talk to your shoulder part to see which side is better. Mm -hmm. So, first one. Hannah, Samantha, what did you guys say? Factor. And our main reason is that 12 is easy to factor. Um, could definitely go with, if we are looking at it, what? Negative 6, negative 2, right? Easy to factor. Second one. Devin, what did you guys say? Square root. It's going to maybe come out to be a of the answer, like a fraction, but it's not hard to do if you the square root of those. And our main reason is we have no x terms, right? If you don't have an x term, you want to use this one. So your homework today is doing 7 to 27 on. Use the quadratic formula, okay? I need you to write that. So when I'm looking at question 7 in your homework, what I'm going to see on your paper is you're going to start with writing number 7. You will write the equation, the 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. Then you will write the quadratic formula. So like on your line paper, you might have x equals the three minus and you're going to write that down, plus or minus the square root, and then this would be your division line over the 2a, okay? So leave space for each problem as you're doing it. And I will tell you that some of these beginning ones easily could have been done without a factor, without the quadratic formula. You probably could have done them by factoring or by another way. But we are going to do them by factoring. Okay? Tomorrow, key thing is we talk about this discriminant, which is the part that's underneath here. So this last part asks you to use which method would you use to solve this? Round your answer to the nearest hundred. Okay? So you're going to say, I would do factoring. And if you did factoring, you probably don't have to worry, right? Because it wouldn't be to the nearest hundred. If you're using square roots, you might, because it might come out to be a square root of a decimal or a fraction, and they still want you to round it to the hundred place. Or you may be using the quadratic formula. Okay? We are going to take a homework quiz, and the homework